morning students welcome to lila studio today we will discuss about characteristics of the cell lines and their maintenance so if you see what do you mean by cell line the cell lines are permanently established cell cultures which have ability to proliferate and stop so what do you mean by proliferation proliferation to rapidly divide now these cells are rapidly dividing cells till when they will be divided they will be dividing till they reach their senescence otherwise you can say these cells have ability to divide in for a definite number of cell cycles if each and every cell each and every cell will have definite or specific life span so only up to such cell cycles the cell will divide based on their genetics right after that it will stop proliferating or it will stop dividing and it will enter into the senescence that means it will stop and enter or it will result in self destruction right so here the cell lines are permanently established cell cultures right which have ability to proliferate and also the stop after certain cell divisions so here you can see they remain in specific location that means when you subculture the cells they occupy here you can see they occupy the complete area right whatever you are providing from the top view you can see like this they spread as an uniform layer of cells and they divide right so here they occupy the complete space and they remain in the specific location right as they are anchorage dependent cells and they utilize the nutrients provided right so then as they grow further as they divide further what happens they become specialized cells what do you mean by specialized cells that means they attain certain specific function so every cell will have certain function the skin cells have different function kidney cells have different function right liver cells pancreatic cells each and every cell is an specialized cell because they have specific function right so they are also called as differentiated cells that means they have differentiated or attain some function right so they become and specialized so these are the characteristics of the cell lines so now let us see what are the types of cell lines so here you can see the cell lines are classified into three types finite cell lines continuous cell lines and transformed cell lines so what is the difference so the finite cell lines means they have definite or limited number of cell divisions that means these cell lines have ability to divide only up to certain cell divisions after that they will stop proliferating right so here it is maximum 5 to 10 times they will undergo the cell cycle or the cell division occurs only for 5 to 10 times after that they will enter into the senescence right so here after doing all tissue culture we doesn't want any cell to die right the cell which has death is also referred as mortal cells so as these are mortal cells we don't want to lose the cells so what we can do again take the fresh media and again inoculate them in that fresh media the sterilized fresh media so that process is called as subculturing process so the immortal cells before they enter into the senescence when you go for the subculturing you can obtain the finite cell or you can maintain the finite cells without dying right so here now you can see the finite cells they have limited number of cell divisions so they are referred as mortal cells because they have death right and in order to avoid the loss of finite cells we go for the subculturing technique okay so coming to the continuous cell cell lines here the continuous name itself represents they have ability to divide continuous or they have ability to divide indefinitely right so they divide continuously hence they are called as immortal immortal cell lines so so here so as these are immortal cell lines there is no requirement for subculturing 
right so there will be as the nutrition is provided the sufficient nutrients are present the cells will divide continuously so these are immortal cells again coming to the transformed cells here these cells are also divide indefinitely that means even they don't have any uh, limited life right they divide indefinitely and gradually they transform into tumor cells or cancer cells that means see when they are dividing continuously or indefinitely they undergo certain genetic changes because of which they form occur the transformation right these transformation result in new characters as a result they transform into tumor cells or the cancer cells is that clear so here you have finite cells continuous cells and transformed cells so let us see how you can maintain these cells right when you see the maintenance of the cell lines first you are going to select any organ or any tissue from which you want to have your cell so here i have selected the liver so from the liver i am going to take a small cube of tissue right a small cube of tissue will be sliced and i am going to take that portion right and this tissue has to be disaggregated disaggregation means separation the tissue is a group of cells right the group of cells has to be separated so that separation is called as disaggregation process so from the tissue i must separate all these cells so now what i am going to do i am going to use trypsin enzyme so i am going to use the enzyme trypsin for disaggregation so this disaggregation process is referred as trypsinization process right the process of separating the cells using trypsin is known as trypsinization right and this trypsinization process is also referred as enzymatic disaggregation process because we are using the enzyme trypsin right so then after trypsinization when we subject this tissue to the trypsin now all the cells will get separated right so now in this cells some of the cells may be alive and some of the cells due to some harshness or rupture of the cell wall there may be some dead cells so you you need to go for the centrifugation process so when the centrifugation process occurs you are going to take only the live cells and discard the dead cells right the supernatant will be discarded so now you are left only with the live cells so now these live cells you will be using as the specimen for inoculating into your media right so from this specimen you are going to uh, get the separated cells and the separated cells or disaggregated cells will be inoculated into fresh tissue animal tissue culture media so here i have taken the animal tissue culture plants in which i have the sterilized tissue me animal tissue culture media so it is inoculation and incubation at favorable temperatures right the temperature ph everything is maintained so now i am going to inoculate these cells into the fresh media and i am going to incubate right so when i incubate i obtain a mono layer of cells so the cells occupy the complete substrate substrate is nothing but the the surface of the container or the tissue culture vessel right they are anchorage dependent cells so they go and get adhered to the substrate and grow as a mono layer a uniform layer when you view from the top you can see the cells like this right you can see a compactly packed a uniform or uni layer the single layer of cells which is adhered to the substrate or the container right so now these cells are referred as primary cell lines right so the primary cell lines how you define primary cell lines are the cell lines which are obtained directly from the specimen right directly from the specimen by culturing in suitable media and environmental conditions 
is that clear so now these primary cell lines when subcultured again or when subcultured further what happens here when you want to subculture these cells again you need to go for your trypsinization process you have to disaggregate the cells in this right by using the trypsin treatment again those disaggregated cells will be inoculated into again the fresh set of media right and again after that that is referred as subculture subculturing means here the primary cells are disaggregated by using trypsin and the disaggregated cells are inoculated into fresh media right and again inoculation after inoculation it is the incubation to obtain again a monolayer of cells so now these cells are referred as secondary cell lines right so how you define secondary cell lines these are the cell lines which are obtained by subculturing the primary cell lines right so what are primary cell lines these are the cell lines which are obtained directly from the specimen right whereas the secondary cell lines these are obtained by subculturing the primary cell lines is that clear so now you have primary cell lines and the secondary cell lines so this secondary cell lines when you subculture further right when you are subculturing what happens you you can know their character what is the character of that particular cell line is that a finite cell line or a continuous cell line that means is that a mortal cell or an immortal cell if the cells which are subcultured right if they are dividing only up to limited time and attaining the cell cells you consider them as finite cells if the cells are indefinitely dividing then you consider them as continuous cells so here the finite cell lines now when they are subcultured repeatedly you are inoculating into the fresh media again get a monolayer again inoculate again trypsinization inoculate again into the fresh media again you obtain the monolayer again trypsinization so like that you are going to subculture them for more than 70 times right when you are subculturing them in more than 70 times or transferring them into the fresh media what happens they attain the new character so now these cell lines after 70 subculturing right it is referred as established cell lines why you calling them as established cell lines because they have increased life span right they have increased life span so now coming to the continuous cell lines see here in case of continuous cell lines they divide continuously that means they don't require any subculturing process so here when there is no requirement for the subculturing process you have to provide the sufficient amount of nutrients for them because they are dividing they are immortal cell there is no death they will not stop proliferating they proliferate continuously so here they divide repeatedly so during this repeated cell cycles what happens there will be some changes right the genetic changes occurs because of which the cells will transform into cancer cells is that clear so now you can see the first thing is their main character is they are permanently established highly proliferating and stop when required or stop according to their genetics is it clear then they have specific location then they become specialized cell so based on this cell type if you are taking the kidney cell kidney cell will attain its own function so here the specialized cells will have specific function right so here that is the finite cell continuous cell and transformed cell how you are going to subculture them and how you are going to maintain them for more than 70 80 and 90 cycles is that clear if you have any doubts put it in the comments okay subscribe for further videos